ko si Fidel Valdez Ramos. Ay mataimtim na nanunumpa na tutuparin ko. Ay mataimtim na nanunumpa na tutuparin ko. Ng buong katapatan at sigasig. Ng buong katapatan at sigasig. Ang aking mga tungkulin. Ang aking mga tungkulin. Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Have you ever wondered about the intriguing tales of Philippine property sales under the presidency of Fidel V. Ramos? If you have, you're in the right place. Welcome to a journey into an intriguing chapter of Philippine history, a time marked by significant progress, economic growth, and yes, controversial property sales. Fidel Valdez Ramos, fondly known as FVR, served as the 12th president of the Philippines from 1992 to 1998. This was a period of resurgence for the nation as it recovered from the tumultuous years of martial law and a series of economic crises. Under Ramos's leadership, the Philippines witnessed impressive economic reforms, the restoration of democracy, and a renewed sense of national identity. But as with any historical figure, Ramos's presidency was not without its controversies, and perhaps the most significant of these revolved around the sale of Philippine properties. During his tenure, several state-owned assets were privatized. The aim was to stimulate economic growth, attract foreign investment, and reduce the burden on the government's budget. But the method and motives behind these sales have been a subject of intense debate. Critics argue that many of these properties were sold at a fraction of their actual value, leading to significant losses for the country. These sales involved some of the most valuable and strategic assets in the country, from prime real estate in the heart of Manila to vast tracts of land in the countryside, the scope and scale of these sales were unprecedented. So what led to these sales? Who were the key players involved? And most importantly, how did these transactions impact the Philippines and its people? These are just some of the questions we'll be exploring in this video. So fasten your seat belts as we embark on this historical journey, uncovering the facts, dispelling the myths, and revealing the truth behind these controversial sales. Intrigued? Stay with us as we delve deeper into this intriguing chapter of Philippine history. Subscribe for more amazing content. Keep wondering. The year was 1992, when Fidel V. Ramos ascended to the highest office of the Philippines. A time of significant change and transition, as the country sought to redefine itself following the tumultuous years of the Marcos dictatorship. Ramos, a military man turned statesman, promised a new dawn, a new era of progress and prosperity. Ramos's presidency was marked by a series of major reforms, he sought to liberalize the economy, opening it up to foreign investments. He pushed for a more robust tourism industry, recognizing its potential to boost the country's economy. He championed the construction of new infrastructure, aiming to modernize the country's roads, bridges, and public buildings. Under his leadership, the Philippines experienced a period of steady economic growth. The GDP increased, inflation rates dropped, and the country's international credit rating improved. Ramos was hailed for his economic management, with the Philippines being dubbed as Asia's next economic tiger. But beyond the economic reforms and infrastructure projects, Ramos's presidency was also marked by efforts to foster peace. He sought to end the decades-long conflict with the Moro National Liberation Front, culminating in the signing of the 1996 peace agreement. Yet despite these achievements, Ramos's presidency was not without controversy at the heart of which lay his efforts to address the country's fiscal woes. Among his more controversial measures was the privatization of government-owned and controlled corporations. This move, while intended to alleviate the country's debt burden, sparked a heated debate about national patrimony and sovereignty. As the country moved forward under Ramos's leadership, a contentious issue was slowly coming to the surface. An issue that would not only question his economic strategies, but also his dedication to the Filipino people. However, amidst these reforms, a controversy was brewing, the sale of Philippine properties. As Ramos's presidency progressed, whispers of controversial property sales began to circulate. It was during these years that the nation watched, eyes wide and ears alert, as some of the most significant properties in the Philippines changed hands under questionable circumstances. 
Imagine the astonishment of the public when the news broke out about the sale of Fort Bonifacio. This vast military reservation, steeped in history and strategically located, was suddenly on the block, causing quite the stir among the populace. The decision to sell this prime land was met with both surprise and skepticism. Critics argued that the sale could compromise national security, while others questioned the transparency of the process. But Fort Bonifacio was not the only property under the spotlight. The Manila Hotel, a symbol of Filipino heritage and pride, also found itself at the center of a heated debate. The proposed sale to a foreign corporation stirred a hornet's nest of controversy, prompting concerns about the preservation of national identity and heritage. The public outcry was loud and clear, but did it fall on deaf ears? Then came the controversy surrounding the sale of the Philippine National Oil Company's Energy Development Corporation. This was not just any company, it was a key player in the country's energy sector. The move to privatize it raised eyebrows, with critics questioning the wisdom of relinquishing control over such a vital resource. From military reservations to heritage sites, from energy companies to other significant properties, the sales were as diverse as they were controversial. They sparked a nationwide debate, with critics accusing the Ramos administration of short-term thinking and lack of transparency. Yet despite the outcry and the multitude of questions, many of these sales went through. The properties changed hands and the public was left to grapple with the implications. These sales raised numerous questions, questions that still remain unanswered. As we delve deeper into this chapter of history, we are left with a sense of curiosity and perhaps a bit of unease. What were the real motives behind these sales? Were they in the best interests of the nation or were they driven by other, less noble considerations? The controversy may have faded with time, but the questions and the quest for answers continue. Before we continue, subscribe for more intriguing content, please. The controversial sales had a significant impact on the Philippine society and economy. Following the property sales initiated by Fidel V. Ramos, the Philippines was plunged into a state of societal and economic upheaval. On one hand, the sales brought a significant influx of foreign capital. This led to a boom in the construction industry, which in turn created jobs and bolstered the economy. But the story doesn't end there. With the good came the bad. The sales also led to a noticeable shift in the ownership of the country's assets. Property that was once in the hands of Filipinos was now owned by foreign corporations. This sparked a heated debate about national identity and sovereignty, with many citizens expressing concerns about the loss of control over their own land. Furthermore, the economic benefits of the sales were not evenly distributed. While the urban areas enjoyed a surge in development and job opportunities, rural regions were largely left behind. This widened the gap between the rich and the poor, exacerbating social inequality. The sales also had environmental implications. The construction boom led to rapid urbanization, which took a toll on the country's natural resources. Forests were cleared, rivers were polluted, and biodiversity was threatened. And then there were the cultural implications. As foreign investors poured in, local traditions and customs were often sidelined in the name of progress. This led to a loss of cultural heritage as the country's landscapes were transformed to align with global trends. In the end, the property sales were a double-edged sword for the Philippines. They brought economic growth and progress, but at a cost. The societal, economic and environmental impacts of these sales continue to shape the Philippines today. These sales left a lasting imprint on the Philippine landscape, an imprint that can still be seen today. Despite the years that have passed, the effects of the controversial property sales are still very much a part of the Philippine narrative. So what can we conclude from the controversial property sales under the presidency of Fidel V. Ramos? Well, as we've explored throughout this video, the era of Ramos was marked by a series of property sales that stirred significant controversy. These sales certainly changed the landscape of the Philippines, both literally and metaphorically. We dove into the beginning of this era, looking at how Ramos came into power and the economic landscape he stepped into. We delved into the controversial sales themselves, scrutinizing the motivations, the players involved, and the properties that changed hands.
We then explored the aftermath of these sales, looking at their impact on the country's economy, its people and its place on the world stage. But what does all this mean? Well, like most events in history, it's not black and white. The property sales under Ramos's presidency were a double-edged sword. On one hand, they generated much needed revenue for the country, attracted foreign investment and fueled economic growth. On the other hand, they led to the loss of national assets, sparked public outrage and raised questions about governance and transparency. So, as we wrap up our exploration of this fascinating chapter in Philippine history, we're left with a nuanced understanding. The Ramos era, with its controversial property sales, is a testament to the complexities of political decision making. It's a reminder that actions taken in the name of progress can have far-reaching consequences that ripple across generations. We hope this deep dive has given you a better understanding of this intriguing period in Philippine history. But remember, history isn't just a collection of facts and dates. It's a rich tapestry of stories, perspectives and lessons that can help us navigate the present and shape the future. So, keep questioning, keep exploring, and most importantly, keep learning. The past may be written in stone, but our understanding of it is always evolving. Subscribe for more amazing content and keep wondering about the intriguing tales of history. Don't miss out on future explorations and discoveries. Hit subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated with our new content. Your journey of wonder continues with every video. Stay connected and engaged on social media. Continue the conversation, follow us. Thank you for being a part of the Have You Ever Wondered community. Keep wondering, keep discovering. Until next time.